Hi, I'm Andrew with Alder Creek Kite and Canoe. Let's talk about canoes. So, what are the distinct advantages of a canoe? One is that they're deep, they're wide and stable, and they're very, very versatile. Uh, you can have a number of different seating positions, being able to move your legs around, they're easy to get in and out of, and they're great for throwing dogs, little kids, and dropping big old coolers in. So let's look and figure out what style of canoe might work best for you. A recreational style of canoe tends to be deeper, wider, and more flat on the bottom, which is really where you get all your stability. If you've got little ones, dogs, and just like to bring the whole kitchen sink, uh, weekend warrior style, a more recreational style canoe might be great for you. Something about 14 to 16 feet is generally we're going to see this, even touching up to 17 feet if you need to bring that much stuff or have such an army of people with you. As we move along, there are other styles of canoes in addition to the recreational. Maybe a sportsman's style. Let's check those out. Now a more sporting style of canoe is going to be noted by a couple of features, particularly an increased beam for additional stability if you need to stand up and cast out of your boat, high capacity in case you're hunting out of it, and maybe even a square stern for mounting a motor onto. Now if you do mount a motor to your boat, you will have to register it like a motorboat. Outside of sporting canoes, which can run anywhere from 12 up to 17, 18 feet for huge cargo carriers, uh, we start getting to performance boats. So solo canoes as well as high performance touring boats. So let's take a look at some of those. A solo canoe generally will have just a single seat in the middle, only for one person. You can also add certain things to this boat if we're doing uh, downriver paddling, such as flotation in it, and we'll see different styles of seats through all of these boats as well. Advantages of the solo boat are, if it's just me paddling most of the time, that's a great way to go. I can use a kayak paddle with two blades or a canoe paddle with a single blade as well. Nothing wrong with that. In addition to solo boats, in the performance realm, we've got some others over here that can be tandem and solo. Some boats might actually have three seats. Something like this here in the Solo Plus is designed to be a tandem day touring boat or a versatile solo boat. Now, the great part about canoes is you can always revamp the whole thing. We can take the seats and the cross members out, move them around, and make this boat work best for us. But out of the stock package, there are some things to look for. If you think that you'd like to solo your boat, here are a couple things to keep an eye out for. One is going to be tumble home, which is a shape in the middle of the boat that brings the gunnels, or the lip around the side of the boat, closer to the paddler, keeps us from having to reach further out over the boat and makes paddling a lot more comfortable. Another thing to look out for, something like the Aurora, is if you can sit in one seat facing the back of the boat, which brings me closer to the center. We know we see in the movies a lot, somebody paddling with their boat squirting out of the water by themselves, but a little bit of breeze, and that would blow your boat all over the place. We really want to balance or trim these boats out to be more even in the water. So if you think you might want to paddle solo, again, maybe with your dog or a little one, look for something that can allow you to put yourself more towards the middle of the boat. Other things that we'll see in performance boats, they tend to get a little bit narrower, sleeker and therefore faster. For touring and really long-term camping, I'm gonna look for something 17 feet and up in terms of capacity and then the speed to get me from point A to B. If I'm just going out for a day or two, maybe we're at staying at the campground and paddling the local pond or lake, 14 to 17 feet generally will cover that ground. Remember, longer boats are gonna be faster and generally be able to carry more stuff. So think about who and what you'd like to bring. If you'd like to bring extra friends and adults, make sure to have them sit nice and low on the bottom of the boat to lower the center of gravity rather than sitting up top and make you all really tippy. Think about the space as well. While we could fit four adults in this boat, the two in the middle might be a little cozy. So check with your friends and make sure that you like each other just enough for that. There are a lot of different features that you'll see throughout these canoes. Now some canoes have a tractor style or bucket seat as opposed to our standard webbing or bench seat. A lot of these tractor styles might afford you the opportunity to even have a trim adjustable seat. This is great for making more space for packing gear as well as again keeping that boat even in the water. While we have that in the front of the boat, 
Sometimes we'll see it in the back. More often, what we'll get in the stern or the back of the boat is maybe an adjustable foot brace. With this here, I can drive with my legs using my core and get a lot more drive and power out of this boat. Uh, whether, again, I'm paddling solo or tandem, we like to be as efficient as possible to say I have enough energy at the end of the day to still enjoy ourselves. In addition to different seat types, we might find different options and materials of gunnels. Again, that gunnel is the lip around the outside of the boat that really keeps this boat from folding in on itself. Aluminum is very popular, requires no maintenance, and has a pretty clean, sleek look to it. If you really are a sucker for aesthetics, you might look at something with wood gunnels. And if you're like me, you're okay with a small weight gain and doing a little bit of maintenance each year on this boat. But boy, it looks good. So maybe you still would like to solo your boat because any canoe can be paddled solo. If you still have a thwart behind the bow seat or bucket seats and you can't sit up in the front face in the back to center yourself, maybe something like a drop-in seat might just do the trick for you. It just nestles right on the sides of the gunnels and again, allows me to sit closer to the center of the boat, which is easier to paddle. Now with a bench style seat like this, whether it be physically installed or a drop-in, we always have the option of even kneeling, in which case I might not like a nice kneeling pad to take the pressure off my knees. The advantage here, aside from being able to move around a little bit more, is lowering myself further in the boat, making more contact with it as well in case it's choppy to give me more control. So to add to the comfort and versatility of our canoes, we can add a lot of different seat options. And a seat back is a great way to give yourself some back support as well as a little bit of cushion. Something like this is great that you can even unclip it and take it with you over to the beach. There are styles of this for both bench style seats and the bucket or tractor seats. So take a look at what kind of canoe you're looking for and decide what kind of extra accessories are going to make your day just a little bit better. Depending on what kind of performance you want out of your boat, if you'd like it to be more maneuverable, say if you're paddling down river or in swift water, or if you'd like it to track or go straight very well for longer journeys, Look, about, look for how much rocker that boat has. Rocker is upsweep at the end of the boat to decide how much of the boat stays in the water. Now a boat with more rocker means less boats in the water and it makes it much more maneuverable. A boat with less rocker, or minimal to no rocker, locks in the ends of the boat and helps that boat track and be fast. Remember that your seats, your thwarts, and your yokes all serve individual purposes but they also provide structure for your boat. Know that you can move them, replace them, and exchange them, but remember to make sure that you have enough structure to your boat to support it as it moves through the water. Same with your gunnels and your end caps at the very end. Also notice that these small things that look like thwarts at the ends are carry handles. You'll also see some boats with built-in float tanks. Some might be large, some might be very small, and depending on the material of your boat, it might have flotation built in with it. Any kind of composite boat, fiberglass, Kevlar, and carbon, will have some kind of flotation built into the boat. And remember, if you have questions about what boat's right for you, how to outfit it, and what we can do to make it more comfortable, be sure to check in with us at Alder Creek Kayak and Canoe.